Hey, how are you guys doing? Um, getting back to filming now. Thank you all for the messages of support uh, in the recent sudden passing of my mother. Um, I wanted to film something for her as far as to let my audience know who she was and that this channel wouldn't have been possible at all without her encouragement. She was a huge impact on my life. Um, equally with my dad, obviously the two most important people that I've known. And um, my dad had also passed in 2015, and so this was my final parent. It's a little difficult to process. And um, that video that I wanted to make to share with you a little bit about who she was and, and all of that uh, will have to come at a later date. Um, I wanted to get something filmed though. I, I'm trying to do things to distract myself and take it one day at a time. And so this is a video that I wanted to film for a while um, about the small notebook. And so we're gonna get into that. Stay tuned for the video about my mom. It will come at a time when I'm ready to give it. I'm still constructing all the things that I would like to say in it. Um, to make sure that I can tell you about who she was. So I would appreciate it if you guys uh, took the time to watch that when it does come out. Um, there will be no monetization of that video, no ads or anything. So it's just uh, so you can learn a little bit about the journey that I've gone on to arrive at where I'm at and the people who helped me get here. So forget to get started then. Uh, this is called The Small Notebook, Justified and Explained. Um, I did mention the small notebook many times on my videos. You'll hear me talk about it. Um, it's definitely mentioned in the how to study video, which some people liked and some people didn't like. It's just a method of studying. Maybe it's not good for you. Everybody learns in different ways. And so in this one, I wanted to explain and again, justify the necessity, in my opinion, of the small notebook. And the first thing is, what is a small notebook? I, this is gonna be shocking, I know. Um, if you compare, this is a regular sized book and these are smaller. That's why they're called a small notebook. So some of you have said, oh, can I use a big notebook? Well, you can, but that's not a small notebook. And the reason that we want a small notebook is because I can fit this one in my back pocket, just like that. Try that with your big notebook sometime. It's going to be harder to do. And so a small pocket-sized notebook, this one comes from Moleskine. It's leather bound, it's got this cool little flap which makes you feel like you're a journalist. And you can take your little journal notes, it's very well created. Um, I recommend this if you're in it for the long haul, like you're gonna be doing this a while and you wanna kinda recall what you've learned. This is a cheaper version. Not all of us wanna spend whatever this costs, 12 to $14 or something like that on Amazon or maybe a little bit more at your local Barnes & Noble or whatever kind of bookstore you have nearby. And maybe there's a local bookstore and you wanna support your local businesses, that's fine too. This one comes from Walmart or something like that. They usually have them, back in the past, I got like four for a dollar eight. You could buy two for yourself and give two away to someone in need, right? You wanna inspire someone to travel on the path that you're traveling on, give them a couple notebooks to get started. Um, in the past, I've given these to students. I like to write usually one of the quotes from the AOPS books that they mention. Um, that's another thing that, uh, a side thought really quick, the AOPS books are not just about learning the concepts and things like that. It's kind of an, a, a big picture idea. There's a lot of, I don't know, uh, ner uh, intellectual nourishment in there that goes beyond just the formulas. And the quotes are one of those things. Many of them have been pretty profound even for me and I've really appreciated reading them. So I like to write a little quote at the top or something like that that I liked. One of the quotes, you pick one that you liked, you write it in there. Or if you give it to your friend, pick one you think they would like. Um, so these are small, these are about 25 cents each. Again, these are about 12 to $14, something like that. Maybe it's gonna go up with inflation by the time you see this video. Um, so let's get to it. I wanna talk about what it is and what it's not. Number one, it's not a list of copied formulas, right? It, you need to fully understand each one. The goal is not to go online, right? Read somebody else's formulas and copy them. Ideally, you should be able to prove all of these. And if you can't prove them, you should be able to understand someone else's proof. And more realistically, you should probably understand their proof until you can recreate it yourself with a blank piece of paper. 
right? That is getting to know the concept that you're learning or the formula or the idea such that you can apply it, right? And so it's not about pure memorization, right? Some people think, oh, what we learned you know, down here, I'll talk about it, don't memorize. It's not about pure memorization. It's a journey of yours down your personal memory lane. It's the things that you've been learning as you've been studying. It's not what somebody else learned, it's what you learned. Where can you get these kinds of formulas, ideas, and concepts? Literally everywhere. You could get them from a school math textbook. You could get them from any of the AMCs. You could get them from math counts, right? You could get them from the AOPS books. You could get them from a forum where you saw somebody explain something in a forum. You could get them from my videos. Right? So there's a whole bunch of places that you can use to draw inspiration to add things to the small notebook. And typically, you kind of feel like there's like a, a central construct that if you knew that one piece, you could have got the problem correct. Those are the ideas that you want to add into the small notebook. More on the specific small notebook tips later. But just to understand, we're not just purely memorizing. Okay? You should not be copying someone else's list. Why? Well, because they're, you're, you're basically taking their memory and experience and trying to make it your own, right? It would be like your friend takes a trip to, say, India, and they're telling you about their trip and what it was like and thinking that their, the memory that they shared with you of their experience in India will be as strong as your memory when you traveled to, say, Korea, right? In the one hand, it was you. You were there. You went to wherever you went in Korea. Say you traveled to the, the, the uh, DMZ at Imjingak, right? You had a personal experience of driving there. You looked at the scenery along the way. You read all the little charts and graphs and saw the pictures and read the history of that location, right? That memory is going to be way more powerful than when they told you what it was like to see the Taj Mahal. Right? So don't rely on someone else's memory. Experience it for yourself. That's why it's not a good idea to just find some list online and copy it. Okay? But does that mean that their list isn't useful? No. Of course it could be useful. There's two ways you can use a list. Sometimes when we're studying, we're focused, we're excited, we're going through problems, and then we forget to write down those parts that we think were important. And because you're just doing something else. You weren't thinking about recording your experience, right? And that's basically what it is. It's a record of your travels, of your journey to get where you're at. And so this could be a reminder like, oh yeah, I did learn that Pythagorean triple. I can write that down now, right? You did learn it. You did have that experience, but you forgot to put it in a small notebook and you realize it when you're going through their list. Option number two, you can use it just like you would use solutions like a springboard. Right, what do I mean by a springboard? Well, you read something about, say, Pascal's identity and combinatorics, and you haven't personally traveled that. You've never proved it. What can you do? You can search it up. You can use your favorite search engine, and you can find Pascal's identity and read about it. Maybe you can find it mentioned in a forum, and they will give you several problems that apply it. You could travel down that path for several hours, become very comfortable with Pascal's identity and why it works. Let's say you go to do that and you discover that you don't understand the underlying principles. How do I do combinations? Okay, thanks Khan Academy. Go learn combinations, right? Go study the underlying pieces that build the structure of Pascal's identity. So that springboard then could advance your understanding of the material. So that's okay, but don't just write it down because somebody said it was true, right? That's not the purpose, okay? So every small notebook's going to be different. Yours is going to look different from someone else's just as your life experiences are different than another person's. You have, everybody takes a different journey. They don't go through all of the learning materials that you could go through in the same way, in the same order that you did. So the order that you write in yours is going to be different. Now, there might be that yours is unorganized. You might have a couple triangle formulas and then something about a circle and then combinations and then, I don't know, various other tra trapezoids. Then you get a triangle again. You might be like, oh, my OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, is telling me that I should have had these triangle ones together. Oh, man, that's tough. Uh, what you could do is have two notebooks then. The first one, you just write everything in. And then when you feel like you've gotten it all down, then move it to your organized list. My personal preference, I don't think that's needed. I mean, the test isn't written in a particular order of concepts. 
So it's kind of good to be jumping all around and making math kind of a web of interlocking ideas and things that you've learned that you travel here and then suddenly you're over here. I think you have that all the time. You're on problem 13, you're doing combinatorics, and on problem 14, it's a 3D reasoning problem. Right? These things, and then you're back to something else, and then 20 is back to combinatorics again. That's how it is on the test, so maybe it's not too bad to have it kind of be piecemeal throughout your small notebook. Okay? So, the purpose of the small notebook then is to remind you of what you learned. It's not to show someone else what you learned, it's a personal kind of a journal, if you will, of your personal experience. You are actually, when you write, you are speaking to a future you. It's November 1st, 2021, and the tests are less than a week or two away. You are speaking to that person saying, hey, future self, you learned this at this point. Don't forget that you learned it. That is the purpose of the small notebook, okay? So uh, an example, something like Stewart's theorem. This doesn't come up every year. It maybe comes up maybe uh, twice in a five-year period if you're lucky. And there's times maybe you could apply it, but then other times it doesn't, or Shoelace theorem, right? So the chance, if you have just looked at Stewart's theorem that morning, before the test, you reviewed your small notebook, which is what you should be doing, and you saw it with your eyes and your brain processed, hey, I know Stewart's theorem. Then when you go take that test later and you're on problem 21 and there's a potential application of Stewart's theorem, you're right there on it. You're able to apply it instantly because you've seen it recently. You've looked at it recently. Compare that to the person who hasn't seen Stewart's theorem applied, haven't seen it shown anywhere or proven anywhere in 12 months. They're going to have a lot longer fuse before that, that goes off to show them, they oh, I could apply this. And on a time test, you need it to be quick. That's why we review the small notebook, so that it's in your recent short-term memory. You're recalling your personal experiences. That's the purpose. It's not about what? It's not about don't memorize, right? Uh, the AOPS books do teach don't memorize, and it's good advice. What do they mean by it? They don't mean don't review what you've learned. They don't mean that you shouldn't recall that a squared plus b squared equals c squared, but prove it during the test. Get out. You got 75 minutes. You better memorize a squared plus b squared equals c squared. You better memorize 30, 60, 90 is 1 root 3 and 2 for the ratio. 1x, x root 3, and 2x. If you don't have that ready to go, man, you're slower. Oh, sure, you can prove it. Draw your equilateral triangle, drop the altitude, and demonstrate it. Great. While you're proving all that, we're on to the next question. Okay? So it's not just, they don't mean literally don't, don't memorize what you've learned. What they mean is this. You're not, don't appreciate the fruit without appreciating and understanding the tree that produced it. You don't look at a squared plus b squared equals c squared and just eat that and not appreciate the tree that generated it. Travel, go through the course of the tree and see how that fruit came to be, right? Understand how it was produced, the nutrients that went in, right? The structure of the thought behind it. That's what they want you to understand, right? It's not about pure memorization is what they mean. But they don't mean that you shouldn't just be able to recall the formula later once you've gone down that path, once you've understood it, okay? That's what they're trying to get at, okay? So then um, that brings me to another analogy, a fruit analogy, okay? So I want you to think, um, if you look at all of these books I've got here, right? These are all books that you might study from AOPS and there's Geotopia on the bottom. It's November 1st and you've got less than a week. Go ahead and review all this in that one week time. Good luck. Right? If you're really going to understand everything that you learned and flip through these page by page and look at the thousands upon thousands of problems in a one week time, you must have a time machine because I don't. Right? And so the goal then is to condense knowledge for review. You're trying to condense the most important things that you learned that are most likely to be applied on the test in your opinion, right? or maybe somebody else's informed opinion that they shared with you that might come up. You're trying to get that down to the size of this small notebook, right? So that this contains the most important things. Now, there's going to be a lot of subtlety, nuance, memory that you've got of the process by which you learn certain things in there. And you might recall that and it might not be in there. And that's great. That's what it's all about. You need those memories as well. Okay. But the way I liken it is this. Uh, out, we don't have an orange tree, but pretend this is an orange. This is a piece of a grapefruit. Okay? 
Um, we have a grapefruit tree in the back, and so I cut it up. It gave its life so that you could understand this analogy. Okay, so appreciate what you're about to learn here. So what I think of the books like the volume two here is it's kind of like a piece of fruit. Okay, it, maybe it's a big elaborate piece of fruit with lots and lots and lots of fruit inside. And as you're learning, you're going to be taking pieces of that, let's say it was an orange, and you're going to chop them up and put them into your summer salad. Right? Great. It's going to be delicious. Yeah? And maybe you also want some orange juice, so you take a few of those slices and you squeeze out the orange juice. And when you're done, there's probably still a little bit of fruit left on that rind. Well, that's no problem. We'll just put it in the fridge and come back to it nine months later and eat it. Um, no? That's going to be gross then. Furthermore, you're going to forget what you were doing with that fruit or what its potential uses are. Then that's the same analogy as this. What you want to do, your goal when you're going through these books, is to not have to go through this entire book a second time to get out all of the information that might be useful. There are times if you have enough time and you're not doing other extracurriculars, great. But the idea is to put it away. Put the book away and get out of it what you want to get out of it. Then you can use it like a reference later. Let's say you needed to recall Cauchy Schwartz, which is the inequality identity or theorem kind of idea. Well, it's in here. You can just go look it up from the, the idea of the uh, table of contents in the beginning. Go find it like a reference and look it up and read about it. Right? But you learned it at some point. And then maybe the second time you review it, you might add it to the small notebook because the first time you didn't realize its importance. That's fine. Again, all the notebooks are going to look different. But the goal, what happens to students typically is you take your test, right? And you've done 25 questions, A and B from year 2002 and then 2003. And you write your notes on the test. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, let's go to that test packets that you've got right now in the corner of your room on the desk where they've been sitting for nine months and you haven't opened one. And you know why? Because you're a human being and you have other things to do and you forget and you have this intention, right? You have this ideal. I'm going to come back and look at these. Yeah, how'd that work out? How's that working out for you? Right? And that's the whole point. That's why we want to get this information out of that book and into something smaller so that you can constantly review what you think was the most important things you learned. And if you later need to come back to a specific reference in there and then add it, that's fine too. What you don't want to do is have 12 books that you need to review in one week before the test. That is why we need the small notebook. So with all of that, that's the justification because some people felt it wasn't needed. Um, one more thing. You might think that typing it on a computer screen is going to be good for you. Huh, I don't think so. I'll disagree. If you want to feel that way, fine. Why do I feel that way? Go look at the studies on memory. The students who take notes by hand are able to recall a lot more information than someone who's typing it. So I, I know we're all technologically advanced, but there's no substitute for your physical hand holding a physical pen and writing it down. It takes longer for one. Right? You're seeing your hand movements. You're generating a memory. You don't remember typing stuff. Right? How are you going to put diagrams on your screen? Okay, some of you have touch screens or you can draw them with Desmos or something like that. Fine. But it's still not the same. The memory produced by physically writing is a way stronger memory. I'll link one of those studies in the description so you can see for yourself. So now, specific small notebook tips. Write on only one side. Why? So when I open mine... Okay, this one here, I've got this page written on. I personally like to write in pen. Maybe you're like a pencil only person. You do you, whatever you want to do. I like pen. I like how it pops off the page more. Okay, so then on the back side though, there's nothing. And the reason why is if I hold this up to the camera, you can see it right now. There's something called bleed through. The writing on the page bleeds through to the other side. Now, I'm a big person on even the small minutia, the details, right? If I'm trying to read something on this side and there's bleed through from the other side, your brain has to process and eliminate that bleed through before it can process what it wants to understand. I, I don't know. I, I'm a perfectionist. I kind of want it to work perfectly. I want to make it. I'm setting my brain up for the easiest way to understand. Even on this page, I can see the previous page there. Maybe you do every two pages then. Up to you. But I wanted to eliminate some of that interference with the recall of the information that we wish. So I recommend writing on only one side. What if you have to get two notebooks? Okay, you're going to be fine. All right, two no. Oh, no. All right. So number two, 
have at least 80 pages or so. I don't know what these have. This is a Moleskine. This is, I really love these small notebooks. I think there was some famous author who either created it or used one or something like that. I don't know his name. Uh, some English author or something like that. And that's how these became famous. Or I think of some story I read at one point, maybe my memory's off here a little bit because it's not that important to me. The story of how Moleskine came to be known. Uh, you can find these M-O-L-E-S-K-I-N-E. -E. I will link one in the description as well. Again, they're about 12 to $14. They're leather bound or something like leather. And they got this cool strap on here so you can close it. It's going to hold together a lot better uh, than these notebooks, which as you can see is all creased and there's like, you know, it gets torn pages. This will fall off at some point because you put it in your bag and then it get ripped. That kind of thing. Okay. So, but you need to have quite a few pages. To be honest, I've never even used them all in one book. I've never used all the pages for my formulas. I write small enough and there's enough pages in here that even writing on only one side, you should be good with one. And if you want to rewrite later, or maybe you wrote something in two different spots because you forgot, then you might have to get a second notebook. Fine. Okay. Now, what's next? It needs to be small, not large. We talked about this. It fits in your pocket. Why is that important? Because if you're going to the dentist's office and your mom's getting her teeth cleaned or your brother or sister or something like that, or your dad, and you're sitting in the chair and you've got one of these and you've got this, maybe put this down and get this out instead and study it, right? Review what you've learned. And when you're reviewing it too, what does that mean? Like, okay, so I, I don't just look at the ideas on here, right? And think about it. So um, like, I don't know, let me give an example if I can find one here. Um, so here we go. Polygon diagonals. The number of polygon diagonals is n times n minus 3 over 2. Well, I don't just look at that and go, okay, good, that's the formula, good. No, I go back and I visit my memory of when I generated that. And actually, I generated it from an AOPS book. And when you think about it, you have some uh, polygon, right? And you're going to draw diagonals in it. Well, if you think of there's vertices, say it's an eight-sided figure, right, with eight vertices. Well, if you're at vertice A, there's three vertices that you cannot travel to to be a, uh, a um, diagonal. You can't go to A because you're on A. You can't go to B and you can't go to H. I think H is the eighth letter. I'm not 100% sure. So you can't go to those because those aren't diagonals. So you're losing three diagonals that you could have traveled, three vertices that you could travel to. So you're going to take all N vertices, eight in this case. You're going to travel to the other N minus three that would create a diagonal. And you're going to do that from all of the vertices. But when you've done that, you've actually traveled, you've listed each diagonal twice. One from the perspective of A and one from the perspective of, say, C or D. C to A and A to C. So what do you have to do? You have to divide by two. Good. I reviewed it. Now I'm on to the next one. Right? Don't just look at the formula. Think about what you learned when you wrote it. Okay? So what else do you do? You should review everything in it at minimum once a week. And in my opinion, in the final month before the test, review it every day. Again, traveling memory lane every time. Um, write as little as possible to convey the truth of what you're trying to suggest. So, for example, I've got this one here. In fact, I originally didn't write area. It says trapezoids. It's got a little A, B, C, and D. You might not know this, but there's a property of trapezoids that those two side triangles, the ones marked B and C, are actually equal area every time. They're not congruent. Don't confuse it. Don't get it twisted. They're equal area. So, and that would be true for all trapezoids. And in fact, if you have a quadrilateral with two side triangles created by the diagonals of equal area, it's actually definitely a trapezoid. And I've used that on the test before. See if you can prove it. Don't just write that down. You go and try to see why it's true. I'll give you a hint. It has to do with the distance between parallel lines being constant, which would be the heights of the triangle. Explore that. See what you come up with. So notice I didn't write a lot. You're not, your goal is not to write a book in there, like a whole paragraph or something. Right? You're writing little quick hit pieces of information that make sense to you. All I had to write was B equals C. I didn't even have to write area. I actually wrote that in there because somebody else was looking at it and I wanted them to understand I was talking about area. But the note is really only for me. It only has to make sense to you. It's not for someone else. Don't worry if your shorthand is nonsense to the next person. It's not their journal. It's yours, 
right? It's a future you. And when you look back at reading those words on November 1st and November 2nd before the test, you're going to go, oh yeah, I remember what I was thinking because it's my memory. Again, that's why we don't copy someone else's list, okay? Then, uh, design what you write in advance to be succinct, right? Write things in a way that you can quickly, you know, write it several times. I, when I write in here, I usually write it on a separate piece of paper first, and then I rewrite it, and then I rewrite it again, and then when I feel like it's perfect, then I put it in here. The last thing is to memorize conceptually is much greater than a formulaic approach. So uh, conceptually is like the following. There's something called the harmonic mean. It has multiple uses. One of them is when you're averaging rates of travel, rates of speed, over equal distances, say to work and back home, or halfway to work and the other halfway to work. When those distances are equal, this is just one of the applications of the harmonic mean, I've memorized the formula as such. What it really is, is it's the reciprocal of the average of the reciprocals. Well, that's a little hard to memorize. So for two things, it's simply twice the product over the sum. Now, somebody else will say it's 2AB over A plus B. Okay, what are those A and Bs? They're the rates. But if you're memorizing the formula and not the concept, you don't understand it as well as you should. Okay, same thing for like trapezoids. There's trapezoid formula, the area for a trapezoid. Many students ask them for it, even yourself. Probably right now you're thinking of what it is and you're going B1 plus B2 times H over two. Oh, that's great. That's a formula, okay? Think about what that could be rewritten like. Look for ways to rewrite it in your mind. If you add two things and divide by two, we have a name for that. What is it, right? It's the average, right? When you add two things and divide by two, you are doing the average. So base one plus base two over two, average of the bases times the height. Easy, that's conceptual. Get conceptual more than formulaic whenever possible, okay? Um, that's about all I've got. I hope this justifies a small notebook for you. I'll try and film as much as I can, you know, in the coming days and weeks. We just got to take it one step at a time and onward and forward we go. Okay. Thanks guys. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it helps you prepare for your competitions and, and helps you on your journey. I'll see you in the next one.